Hi everybody. Just out taking a ride here. The sun's settling in the trees a little bit. It's going to start getting a little colder. Thought I'd try to squeeze one in here before it got black dark. Uh, a little different here now out this way with no leaves on the trees. You can see way up in the woods. Uh, kind of bleak looking, but you know, it's it's not raining. So it's a and it's not cloudy. So so far it's a really nice day. So I can't complain. But hope you're getting a chance to get out and ride a little bit. As I've mentioned before, I've been down in Atlanta for quite a bit lately and I haven't been able to take this bike with me. And uh, not having another one to ride down there, I've just been having to make do. Been having some fun with a quadcopter, been putting my uh, ghost camera on it that I'm shooting this video with. Uh, and it's it's been a lot of fun, it's working out. Uh, kind of something cool to do. Uh, you know, you gotta spend the time somehow when you can't ride. That's something distracting, takes your mind off of it. Retirement's going pretty good for me. Um, unfortunately with the weather, I've been spending most of it inside. I haven't been able to get out and really enjoy a lot of it, but I have visited quite a few places in Atlanta and some of them have been able to film for you. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep doing that. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of fun going places, seeing things, but uh, uh, but I do miss the bike the most. This is my most favorite thing to do. Um, so I'm going to try to take you along when I go. Sometimes like now, sometimes I'll have something to say and sometimes like now I really won't have a topic. But uh, nothing else, you can enjoy the ride with me. You know? This old girl was all ready to go for me when I got back. Um, if you don't have a battery tender, one of those uh, battery tenders, you need to get one. It's well worth your while. It's, you can get them for half the price of uh, some batteries in some of these motorcycles. And you plug, if you've got access to power wherever you keep your bike, I keep mine in, in the garage, but uh, if you've got power, you just plug it in, you wire it up, uh, and you forget about it. Now you gotta be sure and get one that says that it is a float charger. That's very important. It'll say float on it. Uh, if, if it doesn't say that, it's got to at least say on there that it is automatic, that it will sense the battery voltage and capacity, and that it will cut itself off once it's fully charged. Now these things cut themselves completely off. They're not like a trickle charger that's on all the time just a little bit. That's what we used to use year, years ago, and after a while, uh, that'll damage your battery because it just gets so overcharged. But with these, once it's fully charged, the, the tender will sense that and it will cut itself back to nothing, to zero. Then once again, when the, if for some, you know, over time, the batteries uh, on these lead acid batteries, they will drop voltage just sitting in the housing. I uh, don't know whether it's uh, the, all the steel that they're around and just, you know, everything's got a magnetic field and the magnetic field and electricity are, are, are related. So maybe there's just some way that the, the actual metal of the motorcycle is just taking a tiny bit out of that battery all the time. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it'll, it'll kick back on if, when it senses that the battery is no longer fully charged. And uh, it just saves you so much headache. Um, you get, you're all ready to ride, you go out and your, be your bike's dead. And sure you can, you know, if you got a, you got a, a good big battery charger that you can jump start it with or you know you got a car there and jumper cables you can fire it off but the problem is now you don't know whether the battery's bad or whether your charging system's not working and you might get somebody somewhere where uh, you go to plug the thing in yeah, I mean you go to uh, to start it and it's not uh, it's not gonna work Let's go down here and see what this looks like. I know it's a dead end, but uh, you know, you get somewhere, you go to the store or something, you come out and it's dead again. Now you got to get somebody to help you. But anyway, 
like I said, don't have much topic. This is a, a new little road I haven't been down before. It, it is a dead end, so it's not going to take me anywhere, but uh, it ought to be nice to ride down here anyway. I think in all my travels I have been down here once, but I'm pretty sure I didn't film it. And unfortunately, the uh, sun's right in our face, but I'll be turning around here in a minute. Maybe it won't be so bad then. Some really nice homes out here. Yeah, there's an older, older house. That's really nice. Still got the Christmas wreath up. Ah, you know, I, I got to tip my hat to people that still have them up. Uh, I sure did fuss beforehand. Oh, there's some goats. Hey, goats. I don't know whether those are, well, those are playing goats or those are eating goats. I don't know. You know, around here, some people do uh, raise them to eat them. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I got a couple of donkeys. Maybe three of them. I think there's another one back there. Yeah, I think those are the eating goats. Yeah, it's a nice little quiet road. I'm, I might be the only thing come down this road in, a, in an hour or so. It's kind of cool. Got him a. Looks like he's got a container out there. That's a. We got two containers. Boy, that's fantastic storage. I saw something uh, somebody sent me on the on the internet that uh, <clears throat> where people were taking those they take two of them and they cut one of them up and uh, they make a two-story house out of it and the way they cut it and stack them and, and they of course they put cut windows in them and glass and put porches and all that stuff on it you can't tell it's a container it's really kind of cool you ought to want to check that out sometime do some research on it but uh, I thought it was kind of neat Nice little houses out here. I'm sure it's a nice area to live in. There's a big old house up on the right. I don't know if I get a get you a shot of that or not. Let's see. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, it's different. That's sort of model similar to mine. Of course, mine isn't. Mine's about a third that size, but uh, kind of ma model the same. Sort of an A-frame-ish kind of thing. But. Uh, some nice little quiet roads out here. I haven't been really, didn't really pick a spot to ride to. I just thought I'd get out and ride before it got too late. Don't have the, uh, don't have the wife with me right now. Uh, we got into town and it's a good four and a half hour ride from Atlanta to back up here to the Charlotte area where we live. And uh, she decided she would sit on the porch and just enjoy the quiet, quiet of the countryside. And, Watch the birds eat the bird seed. I'll uh, said, go on, go ahead and go out and ride. And I, I asked her if she wanted to come along, but she said no this time. That's why you got the view out the front. This is my favorite helmet and camera setup. This is a three-quarter open face, and uh, got it hooked up with my chin mount camera and built-in microphone. I did a video on this, and you can check back and see how I see how I did it but I really like not having the shield out it's not so cold that it's not so cold that it's bothered me at all in fact it's really very nice right now um, anything in the anything in the middle and upper 50s and middle and lower 60s for me is ideal riding temperature uh, put on my put on my good riding coat just a pair of blue jeans and some good gloves and I'm good to go I can ride this thing for hours and not feel cold. But uh, seems like most of my most of this ride I've been riding into the sun, and I apologize for that. But like I said, I didn't really plan much of a of a ride this way. Okay, well, gonna turn right into the sun again. So I'll let you guys go. You take care, and uh, I'll catch you next time around. Bye bye.